Hi there, so today we're going to talk about how to find the nth term. So we use the nth term when we have um, a sequence and we use it to try and um, to try and solve what other terms would be. Okay, so that might not make sense. Sorry, I was trying to think of an easier way, but that might make sense, but it will do in a second. Let's just start off with a couple of sequences, okay? So let's have a look at maybe um, 4, 7, 10, and then dot, dot, dot. Okay. But what will come next? Well, we're adding on 3 each time. So the next two terms, we would have 13, and we would have 16, wouldn't we? Okay. What about 6, 10, 14, dot, dot, dot? Well, in this case, we're adding on 4 each time. So we would have 18, and then we would have 22, and 26, and so forth. Okay. Let's just go back and think about that. That first one that we thought about. So that was 4, 7, 10. So that was 4, 7, 10. Okay. Now the nth term essentially is a formula to work out any term in this entire sequence. So if we wanted to, we could use this formula to work out the millionth term. We could use it to work out the thousandth, the hundredth, the fiftieth, the twenty-fifth, anything. It's just a much easier way, obviously, than trying to count through all the way to the thousandth term or all the way to the hundredth term. It's just a nice, simple, easy formula that we can use. Um, so we can get to those much quickly, much more faster, much quicker. So what we do, the first thing we think about is, right, we're going to try and think about the gap in between each of these terms. So we have 4 to 7, 7 to 3. Now the gap in between is 3, the gap in between is 3. So the gap in between each of these numbers is 3. We're adding on 3 each time. So the first part of our formula is 3m. Okay, and what that represents is that this number here, is always the gap in between each of the numbers. Okay, So we think about the gap, which is 3, and then we just say 3n. Then to finish off, what we think about is, right, we're going to take this 4, and we're going to go back a step. We're going to think about what number was before 4. So if we went back, we'd have to subtract 3 off, and the number before would have been 1, wouldn't it? Okay. So to finish off our formula, we would put in plus 1. And what that means is essentially is that we go back to this previous term, which in this case is 1, and it's a positive 1. It's a plus 1. So that's where this part here comes from. Okay. Let's have a look at another one. What about 4, 8, 12, and so forth? Well, in this case, we would have a gap of 4. We have a gap of 4. We have a gap of 4. So the first part of my formula would be 4n. And if we went back one step, this time we'd actually end up with 0. So it would be nothing to go on afterwards. What about 7? Uh, 12, 17, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so we think about the gap. In this case, it's 5. In this case, it's 5. So the first part of our formula would be 5n. Okay. And if we went back one step, we would end up with 2. Okay, or a positive 2. So in this case, the second part of my formula would be plus 2. So you might then, in your, uh, in your exam, be asked to try and use this to work out maybe the... Um, the 50th term. Okay? And the way we do this is whatever the number they've asked for, whether it be the 50th, 100th, 200th, 1000, we take the number and we substitute it into the formula we have here. So in this case, we have 5n, we take that 50 and we replace the n with the number, whatever they've asked for. It's the nth time, remember, okay? That n is the number. So 50 is replaced by the n, so we would therefore have 5 times by 50, or 5 lots of 50s, which is 250. And then we're going to add 2 onto it. So the 50th term in this sequence would be 252. Um, let's have a look at one more, shall we? What about then if we had 2, 7, 12, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So the gap in between each number in this case, again, is 5, just as we had before. If we got 5, we have 5. So the first part of the formula would be 5n. But this time, if we went back a step, we'd actually end up with a negative 3. If we took 5 away from 2, we'd end up with negative 3, wouldn't we? So the second part of our formula, in this case, would be minus 3. So again, let's have a go at using this. The question would ask maybe what would be the 100th term in this sequence. Okay, So we're going to take our 100 here, and we're going to replace it with that n in the formula. So 5 times by 100 equals 500. And then we're going to subtract 3 away which gives us 497. So the 100th term in this sequence would be equal to 497.